Welcome to the 21st Century Reformation Hour. I'm Herman Otten, pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church, New Haven, and also the editor of Christian News. Each week, Christian News has been showing why, if we needed a Reformation 500 years ago, we certainly need a 21st Century Reformation. Let's go now briefly through what we have in this week's Christian News. It's dated August 16. I am here just completing the issue it will be sent out, and you are getting an advanced preview now of what this issue of Christian News is all about. The lead article is Christ Crucified, Camp Trinity's Message. It shows a group of runners here that were at our camp, and one of the coaches noticed the sign we had at the outside of our building, which we have on the top, We Preach a Crucified Christ, and he mentions that, which I thought was rather unusual. The back of the Christian News has this full-page color, pictures of the youngsters doing all kinds of activity. And you can imagine how that kind of thrills me to see these youngsters going through trees and whatever around lakes that we have here. It kind of livens you up as you're working on the issue of Christian news. Well, on the next story on the top page, we have What Do You Want in a Bible? AAT, Most Clear and Accurate, by Dr. John Drickimer. The subheading is would Walter have used the ESV? The reason we did that, Concordia Publishing House just put out an excellent new summary, or not, I mean, Walter's Law and Gospel, We had many fine notes. Unfortunately, they used the, used the ESV. My question here is, would Walter have used the ESV? Obviously, he never would have used the ESV. The ESV is 91% RSV, and they, most of the translators rejected the basic doctrines of the Christian faith, and they changed the Hebrew text over a thousand times. Dr. Beck often told me that his translation was much like Luther's. Obviously, Walther used Luther's translation. Why? Because not because I followed what Luther said, but only because both of us followed the Greek and Hebrew text. All right, going down here, Passion Play, Problems 2010. That's by Dr. John Warren Montgomery, who's seen now six productions of the Passion Play beginning in 1970, also the special one they had in 1984. He says he's going to see no more. Why? Not because he's getting older, but because they now undermine the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said basically the same thing which Dr. Alvin Schmidt said in our paper a number of weeks ago. Going down here now, we have Harrison addresses election future challenges. That's an interview article with Dr. Uh, Matthew Harrison now, who is president-elect of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. He points out in the interview, by the way, that the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is $45 million in debt. Right next to that I have a box. The treasurer of the Synod called me just yesterday, Dr. Thomas Gupta, and there he pointed out that this, the convention costs now $4.5 million. Then going down here, Linneman and New LCMS Presidium sent more evidence on Becker's pro-evolution. I filed charges a number of weeks ago against Dr. Matthew Becker, now Valparaiso University, had been at Concordia, Portland, previously Concordia River Forest. He boldly comes out for evolution, no question about it, and for women pastors. Then right below that is an article, Most Major Denominations Support Evolution. I use as evidence I have here Dialogue magazine, one of the articles they just recently had on evolution, and I pointed out that almost every denomination today in America, they accept evolution. The only one, and I document that, that did not go along with evolution was the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod. Matthew Becker is trying to change all that, trying to say, no, we really did. How do I know with absolute certainty what the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod taught about it? Well, there's a book called Eckhart's Real Lexicon. Here's one of eight volumes. It has a section, of course it's all in German, and there they have a section on evolution. You can see what our fathers said about evolution until 1906 when this was published. Then going on from that, here's the index to the Concordia Theological Monthly, and they too, not one article supported evolution anyway. We're the only denomination. Sometimes people say, well, the uh, Lutheran Church, they learned from the fundies and from the Baptists. And so, no, when they were giving in, we were insisting upon a six-day, 24-hour creation. Well, on the next pages we have the turret pages, different items. Let me just read a few to you. Chinese officials demolish three South Church building. 
Theologian says Jesus was not crucified on a cross. Teen girls drinking more than boys. Presbyterian Church USA elects Procept homosexual moderator when separation is first rejected. Scientists are not God. The mosquitoes toolkit. Now those are just brief summaries of what what that particular page was. Page three now. Again more articles. Homegrown porn. Hating father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters. Divorced clergy approved as bishops. Devout Muslims heading homeland security. Professor fired after lecture on homosexuality. Page four, our first editorial page. There I made a suggestion what we should have done at the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod Convention about the Omar Amagal play. Adopt the resolution. I think it would have gotten nationwide publicity. I've seen very little about what Dr. Montgomery pointed out about the Passion Play. Commend the citizens for having it, but pointing out now how they are departing from the text. Then we have here an article on the LCMS's finest and most scholarly presidium. I begin by saying that I've been around the block a few It's obvious the way I look here. I'm old, not the young men anymore when we started. They're around the block of New York where I worked and played and all these years. But I've also had the opportunity to, to have private discussions with every one of our presidents since President Bankin. He first became president in 1935. And also personal talks with many of the vice presidents, also in the other Lutheran uh, church, their bishops and so on. I know of no more scholarly and finer presidium. I say that on the basis of, of uh, their writings. Here, for instance, Dr. John Woolrobbie. This is what we published on his writings, serving captains for the good ship Missouri. Dr. Well, uh, Pastor Preuss, Why I'm a Lutheran, Jesus at the Center. All these books are available from Christian News. Here an excellent book by Dr. Scott Murray, Law, Life, and the Living God, the Third Use of the Law in Modern American Lutheranism. Now we've had many fine vice presidents, but not, also, not the kind of scholars that we have on there now. Dr. Uh, Matthew Harrison does not yet have his earned degree, although the other men here, three of them have, but yet I've read his writings and I mentioned some of that in this editorial. And I'm going on now, uh, will the LCMS finally take a stand versus evolutions and supporters of women's ordination? Throughout history, the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod has never removed anybody teaching evolution. We didn't have to the first hundred years. Nobody was doing it. Then they started creeping in, and I mentioned that history here. Some of the char And Dr. Becker now, he differs from some of the others in that he boldly comes out for it. He really is challenging our new presidium. Now they're being put to the test. What will they do? Here I photograph a textbook used at Valparaiso University by Dr. Carl Klecker. He's still living, still on the clergy roster, and he comes all out for evolution. Then we have here, oh, a faith of an atheist. I, the reason I brought that in because in the CTM, which I quote in here, I quote an article entitled Atheistic Propaganda in America. And here you can see in this CTM, which was published in 1931 already, quoting from the American Anti-Bible Society, they make this statement that whoever accepts evolution should stop preaching Christianity. Now that's based, and they approvingly quote that, that was basically the approach of our church. Now we're going to see what will be done about evolution. I know people are talking about worship services and, and liturgy and all, and those are important things, but this is far more devastating. If we accept evolution, then we begin to undermine the basic content of the Christian faith. Then I have here an editorial. Oh, I can't get through it all to get the flash sign here. I have articles on the American translation, what different churches said about the American translation, and you can see how the AAT far excels any other translation. I have here a photo taken here at Camp Trinity, just a few yards from where I'm sitting here. Different scholars, Dr. Horace Hummel, uh, Herb, Herbert, Dr. Xavier Becker, from all these different Lutheran groups, we got them together here to evaluate changes for the American translation. People say, well, it's a one man. No, it isn't. We had hundreds came in, and we had these leading scholars. Now it's totally absurd that CPH is using the product of liberal scholars when they could have used the product of Bible-believing scholars. Thank you.